One of the best platforms for inspiration is, of course, Pinterest. I want to create a tag and will check my saved Pinterest board for some inspiration. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. It's been a while since I last posted a video for my Pinterest inspired series. And you can find that playlist linked below in the description box, by the way, in case you want to check out older videos from this series. So let's search for a pin that we can use as inspiration. So this is my Pinterest board for inspiration. And you can see here I saved a few pins. This one here is actually the one I did in my last video where I made a journal cover using this as inspiration. And let's see what else can we find. It's a lot of great options here. And when you look for these, don't only look at what materials you have yourself, but think about what you could substitute when you don't have the exact same materials. So dragonfly here, that would be cool. And sometimes these pins also have links to blogs where you can see exactly how the tag was made. This is beautiful, by the way. It looks very much like autumn. But how about this one? This one also actually has beautiful autumn colors. Looks like it's done with alcohol inks, which I don't have, so I will have to find a substitute. Uh, there's some floral Tim Holtz die cuts, it looks like. I don't have those as well. So yeah, this looks intriguing. Why don't we try this one? So as you can see, I've already cut a tag shape out of a sturdy cardboard. And the first thing I want to do is add an eyelet because it looks like that was painted over unless she had a white eyelet. But in any case, I don't have a white eyelet. So let's add that eyelet first of all. Just going to take silver, not that it matters. Let's punch the hole in the middle and set our eyelet. And now we paint the front and the back white with gesso. And it looks like I will need at least two coats. I'm painting the sides as well. Adding a second coat after it's dry. By the way, I did check out that blog spot that it has. I will link this pin for you below in case you want to have a closer look yourself and you want to use it as inspiration. So there's a, it's not a link, interestingly, it's just the name of a blog and it's called freesense.blogspot.com and I checked it out, but I could not find this particular pin and also it's all in Russian. So I could not have read it even if they were had instructions there. But somehow I like the challenge of not having any instructions better anyway. <laughs> I'm going to try to get some of this paint out of this eyelet. Oh yeah, that is still very liquid inside here. Perfect. So then I can do the backside. And then we also need some white painted twine. This one is white already, but it's not the same white. So I'm just going to add gesso to this as well. See, these are things that I would have never thought of to paint my twine and also my eyelid. So that's what these pins are just great for. Now we need to work from the background up to the embellishments in the foreground. So what I see on the background are these beautiful orange and olive green colors, which to me really look like alcohol colors. If you see that differently, please let me know in the comments below. And they do look like the Tim Holtz forest moss and could be rusty hinge, could be wild honey. They both are a very similar orange. If I use these 
distress oxides or inks in those colors they would be fairly diluted on this background because i would have to add water to them to be able to apply them so instead i'm going to use some watercolors which will hopefully work better so i have this inexpensive set of koi watercolors i found this on amazon if you just search for koi watercolor it's a japanese brand i like it these are my color swatches which are always handy to have and this is my very very messy palette <laughs> and i think this green and this orange will work very well let's start applying the green first so we have some on the edge here not going to be too precious and I might do another coat now we have some here and there's going to be some cardstock over that and then there's some here as well and I don't know what's happening underneath where the butterfly is so maybe for good measure I'll just add some there just in case something will peek through Okay, I'm going to dry this. This looks absolutely gorgeous to me. Even though it's not alcohol ink, I think we can get some really nice effects with the watercolor. So you don't always need all the expensive stuff. So I'll just go over everything again. Of course, it helps that I have gesso underneath so that the cardboard doesn't soak up all of the paint. Okay, let's try it one more time. I mixed these two colors here and it gives me this beautiful bright orange. And here's just a close-up of the olive green. Okay, so let's add the orange. Let's try this second coat what a beautiful color combination I love it this here happened by accident but I love it and in order to make that look a little bit more intentional I think I should add just a couple more so I think with the white splatters that we're going to add at the end I think it's going to look really nice and if we look closely, then we can see that there are some strips of heavier cardstock in the same colors glued on top of this tag. So I'm going to use these same colors and I'm going to paint some bits here. This is watercolor paper. Adding a second layer after it's dry. And I can already see it's behaving a bit differently than it was on the gesso, logically. And then let's do the same thing with the green. And then I'll use my paper trimmer to cut some rectangles out of these. Some of the pieces that have the orange also have some white showing. So let's do that as well. This time I want straight edges. Very unusual for me. <laughs> so let's play around with these a little bit to see how they could fit. So I think there's one here. Not that we have to do it exactly like on the photo, it's just an inspiration. But in this case, I actually want to try to do what she did and see if I like that look. So I don't know if these are overlapping or not. I'll just have them overlapping. 
she has a black border around her pieces or she made a black design with a ballpoint pen because to me it looks like she has some rectangles that are not necessarily strips of cardboard but I could be wrong it's really hard to see in any case what I will do is to just edge all of these with some black ink going to use my ranger jet black archival ink and Use it straight from the ink pad to get a nice and thin line. Like that, and I'll do that for all the pieces. So this is what I have now. They're all edged. Now I want to start thinking about some of the other embellishments on this tag. And if you look closely, there's not only one big butterfly, there's actually three butterflies. Two of them are really small. One is in the upper left corner and one is on the right top wing of the butterfly. That was a little easier to see. Of the big butterfly, I mean. <laughs> so I went through my stash of butterflies and I found these and at first glance I thought, oh, you know, one of these might work. But besides the fact that the color is completely different and looks horrible, actually this one, this one would work color-wise, but there's something very essential missing on this one that the one on the Pinterest tag has. Do you know what it is? quiz here write it in the comments below before i say it <laughs> no so what is missing is the big contrast so if you look at the one on the tag it has this beautiful black which is such an important contrast for this tag to work and this one is missing it if we had nothing else we could of course paint the edges of the wings black definitely an option but then I searched some more and I came across this butterfly. This is like one of my favorite butterflies. You might recognize this. This is on a freebie, which I will link for you below as well. You might already have this. This was from the Five Digital Items Summer Swap, which was a collaboration with Rhonda Winstead and Louisa Heinzel. And this was my freebie. So please find that link below if you would like this butterfly. And I think this one is perfect because do you see how great the contrast is and it will pop on this tag especially if we add some more of the orange or on the, of the light colors underneath concerning the two smaller butterflies i kind of want mine to be a little more visible than the ones on the tag on pinterest i didn't want to print any extra digitals so going through my stash i came up with these two smaller butterflies I don't know if these are going to work. They are quite different from each other. So mm, really, really not sure about that. Actually, now that I'm placing them, so this would, well, actually this would go further down. This would go approximately here. Then one would be up here, which I already don't like. And one would be up here. No, I think they're too big and maybe we do want something lighter now that I see that together. Yeah, actually, that was a wrong thought because if we want this one to pop, then nothing else on the tag should be as dark as these dark parts of the wings. So let me revisit those butterflies. Okay, I caved. I printed. <laughs> I couldn't find any in my stash that's, that are going to work. So I printed my vintage butterfly clip art, which you can find down below as well. And as you can see here, it's printed twice, the same printout on the same page in small. So I will show you how I do that here. So I go to file print. And then here where it currently says preview, I go to layout. And here I can change the pages per sheet to, in this case, I'm choosing four. So that gives me this small version here. And then I just print that. And then once that comes out of the printer, I put the same sheet in again, but I just turn it 180 degrees and then I print a second time, which will then be on this part of the printer paper. So which one do we choose that will kind of be visible, but not too dominant? So it should probably be either, either this one or the same one or this one here. Although no, I'm not sure I like this one because this is kind of off white and I'm not sure if that will look nice on our white tag background. This one would work that has more of 
I think more of a, well, no, actually it's the same. Why don't we just take the smaller version of the big one? So if you have this freebie, obviously you can use that same method I just showed you to shrink it down and then you don't need this. But if you want a bigger variety of butterflies, feel free to check out digital paper. So here are our two little butterflies. So one goes here. I'm not sure I'm loving that position. And then one goes here. This one is totally fine. This one I'm not happy with, so I'm going to move this one. Maybe just a little bit up there. Another element we see in the background are these three flowers, which are obviously die cuts. I'm pretty sure they are Tim Holtz die cuts. I don't have those exact ones. I am lucky to have this set. What would I do if I wouldn't have any die cuts? I would check my stamps and cut those out or even stencils. You could cut those out as well or even go through a book or magazine and see what I could cut out. And I have decided I'm going to go with this shape, which is this one right here. So now I need to choose a cardstock. The challenge is to choose one that is not the exact same colors that will show up a little bit, but not too much because we don't want to take the butterflies thunder. So I'm going to try this with two different papers or cardstock. This is one. This is obviously a Tim Holtz one. Is it the memoranda? I am not sure. And this is the other one. So this one has these beautiful green tones. So I'm kind of thinking this one will be better. I think they might be from the same paper collection. So I'll take these to my die cut machine and cut out a few and then we'll play with those. So here they are. I cut out two of each. So these are more grayish and these are more green, warmer tones. And I think these will match better. Let's try the gray ones first. I know she put three, but I think three is a bit much because these kind of seem a little bit wider. And it has this second one here anyway, so I don't think we need three. I would get rid of the bottom part. So our butterfly would be approximately here. Mm, yeah, not so thrilled with these. I think this needs to be higher so it stands out behind this white background. I think these are better. I might edge these with Distress ink to make them come out a bit more. I'm going to take my Forest Moss Distress ink to distress the edges. So you can see with and without distressing quite a difference. So this is what I have so far. Now we're still missing all of this wonderful texture. I don't have those materials that she has. That orange straw or what that is, what looks like a bow kind of underneath. I'm sure that's dyed with the same distress ink or oxide. I don't have anything that looks like that. And I also don't have that white thing that she has underneath. So let me see what I can come up with. In the meantime, I have glued down these rectangles because they were moving around so much that they were driving me crazy. And I found this eyelash trim. So I have it in white and I have it in coffee dyed version. This one would definitely be closer to what the Pinterest tag has, but I think I like the bright white one better with this background. So let's just wrap around a bit and then let's trim that off. And that will go here underneath the butterfly. That might actually already be too much. Yeah, that's too much. That would be okay. And then for the bow, I'm not sure yet. I have been gifted this here, which are some fibers from linen, which obviously have been dyed. They are a bit more yellow than orange, but I think it's okay to have this a little bit brighter. I don't think I have any pieces that are long enough for me to actually make a beautiful bow like that, unfortunately. So what could I do instead? Oh, they are super delicate. Oh, I can just pull these apart. Okay, so I can't tie anything. 
so instead i would just kind of i guess mix them i would just kind of add them underneath i could actually i could not tie a bow but just put the pieces here so that we have the illusion of a bow when in fact it is glued down in the middle and there's no bow at all it's a bit fiddly i must say <laughs> not sure i love this the cool thing about the bow in the pinterest tag is that it's not a regular bow you see it has these edges and it yeah it literally looks edgy which i like <laughs> this might not be the best material to use okay let's see oh we still need to add these but i just want to check on this first hmm. and then we still need to add these underneath so I wanted one that peeks out on top here. And then we need one here. I don't know. Let's check some more options. I have this beautiful fiber here. I know it's not the color that we have on the Pinterest tag, but again, it's just inspiration. So maybe we don't like it. So let's just try a little bit. Or is this the one we should use for the bow, maybe? Can I tie a bow just like that? Oh, I can. <laughs> so if we use this as our bow, and we try this again, the eyelash trim underneath, I do think it's a lot better than the yellow one. Not gluing that down yet. I want to keep my options open for now because we have some more elements to add. For example, we still need to add our little butterflies. So one goes here, maybe further up. I think it's more visible up here. And the other one goes here. And I almost forgot, we have a sentiment to add. So she used round alphabet stamps. I'm pretty sure I already decluttered mine because I never used them. But I will go check. And if I have decluttered them, I will find an alternative. Before I do that, I actually want to try something else. I found some more Avril yarn. And I want to try this one here. This is a mixture of white and the olive green. Maybe that would work well instead of the eyelash trim, which I think is a bit much. I think my issue is that this is just so bulky. It's There's too much going on underneath this butterfly. And I know that is the charm of that tag. But it's not working for my tag. And these bits keep moving around and they're driving me crazy. Side note. <laughs> so what if we just do this and that? I think that's more me and a lot easier to handle. I do still astonishingly have my round stamps. I have letters and numbers. Please don't ask me where I got this. I don't remember. But they are reversed. So the majority of these is black and then the number will be white if I stamp it on white cardstock. So I think if I use these, it will be too dominant again. Then the focus will go on the sentiment and not on the butterfly. So I don't want to use those. Instead, I'm going to use this stamp set. I bought this locally a few years ago. It's from the company Cavallini & Co. Spelled C-A-V-A-L-L-I-N-I -L -L -I -I Co. I'm not sure where else you can find these. So this is what they look like. I don't usually work with these a lot because I always find it a pain to line them up. But in this case, we don't need to line them up because we'll be cutting them out. So I'll take the back side of this watercolor paper. And instead of be happy, I am going to stamp be true just because 
Another thing that I also don't like with these stamps is that you always get the ink on the edges as well. And I don't like that when I'm stamping a full word. But in this case, again, I think it might be an asset because it will help me to figure out where I need to cut these. So I'm on purpose going to try to stamp it with the box around it. Okay, so here's what that would look like and I actually quite like that. Seeing the letters cut out like this, actually now I like my stamp set. <laughs> so again, that's the benefit of looking at someone else's work more closely because then you maybe find uses for your own things that you didn't even think about before. So I'm now ready to glue all these bits down. So everything is glued down. I must admit that that's the part I enjoy the least. And I added this twine but I don't like it. It is super st stiff now with the gesso on it and it's too thick. I'm not going to use this and instead I want to try either this fluffy one that we didn't use for the bow or we use the same one that we have underneath here. Question is how to add it since it is quite floppy. I don't know. Do we add this one? Maybe if I tie it another one around it make a bow no this is not working <laughs> okay, i'm going to go with this so it's a bow and i just tied a double knot around the bow with this fiber here before i add the splatters i'm going to do one more thing this is now going off a tangent not sticking to the original which is a good thing because i want to add a little bit of crackling just around here with my crackling stamp from crafty individuals i will link this stamp for you below they come unmounted and i'm hoping now that i'm not going to destroy this tag <laughs> that would be quite frustrating so i want to be very gentle and subtle uh, maybe a little more than that <laughs> okay what's going on here oh i was using the wrong corner okay Yeah, and up there I would leave it white. What do you think? Was that a good idea or not? I like the extra contrast. Okay, let's do some splattering. I have some watered down gesso and I'm going to cover up my sentiment. We still want that to be legible in the end. And I'm also going to be a chicken and cover up these two. Maybe not necessary. I don't know how big my gesso splotches will be, so I'd rather be careful. So this is the final result. And now the trick is to not look at the Pinterest inspiration picture anymore. At this point, I don't think it's a good idea to compare the two. I think at this point it's important to just look at your individual piece and see if you're happy with it because comparison with someone else's work is seldom a good idea because a lot of times it makes our work feel inferior and that's not the point of this exercise. <laughs> I'm looking at this on its own as an individual piece and I am happy with it. It is different to my usual style. I hope you can see that. <laughs> I certainly can. And in retrospect, I'm also really happy that I used watercolor instead of Distress Oxide for these colors because if I would have done that, then these white splatters would not be white. They would take on the color that's underneath. So this way the white pops a lot more. So thank you for hanging out with me while I made this tag. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. You say take me on a treasure hunt. I long for something new. Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance?